One of the things that I find so useful about Vouch is that he successfully internalised all of the left-wing talking points on many different issues, but he consistently fails to apply that to any situation where it may be good for men. So today he's talking about mass shootings. Now, obviously, a shooting from a transgender individual is a pretty noteworthy event in this environment, in large part because they're so rare. This graph is from Soaked on Left. You can thank him for it. These are mass shootings by uh, gender status, the term he uses. I don't really think this is a very good graph. Uh, no insult to Soaked on Left, but I don't think he went through the thousands of mass shootings to check if there were any transsexuals amongst them. He's just put the three from the last month on one side and then all of the others on the other side. Transsexuals don't commit that many school shootings or mass shootings, and they're a tiny part of the population, so that's pretty much what you should expect. Between 2018 and 2023, and here we have a very proportional 2,826 cisgender-attributed mass shootings to transgender people's three. He says proportional there in a way that implies that he's being sarcastic, but the thing is that is pretty proportional. The reality is that there should be not three, but about seven if it was proportional to the number of transsexuals in the general population. Now, of course, transsexuals get a lot of media attention, especially recently. However, even with the recent growth in their numbers, they're only a very, very small part of the population, about 0.3%. And that would be three per thousand, there's somewhat more than two and a half thousand there, so about seven. Really underperforming there. See, if transgender people committed mass shootings at a rate proportional to their representation in the population, you would expect something a little bit closer to one in every 100 shootings being from a transgender person. In fact, that is an extremely high estimate for the number of transsexual people. It's about three to four times as much as the highest that I've previously seen. So I don't know where that's coming from. Maybe he's including non-binary people or something like that, but it's still a very small number. Of course, you might be wondering, why am I immediately talking about the relative rarity of transgender people committing mass shootings? And that is, of course, because the right wing has exploded with this. They have taken off in an effort to keep the hate train against transgender people rolling. They are talking about the mass disarmament of trans people. They are talking about gender ideology having directly led to these attacks. They are talking about transgender people being innately dangerous. They are using it in well, essentially the same way that you saw conservatives use anything bad done by Muslim people after 9-11 to denounce, to attack, to castigate the entire group. This is true, and it's another example of how the demonization of transsexuals is really just the demonization of men, because these transsexuals are seen as men. Whether it's in the toilets, or being with children, or whatever else, it's always the same form of demonization, which is suspicion of people who seem to be male, or who are perceived as male by the, the non-transsexual, anti-transsexual groups. You might have seen stories about incel mass shootings, which, as far as I can tell, also don't really exist. Certainly incels seem to be more underrepresented than transsexuals. But it goes back further than that. If you go over to Google and Google misogyny and mass shootings, you'll find a lot of news stories from a very long time period seeking to blame the whole, the whole phenomenon of mass shootings on misogyny and domestic violence and similar things. It's probably second only to video games, and maybe Marilyn Manson as well, in terms of things to wrongly blame for spree killings, and especially school shootings. This isn't new. The disproportionate fixation of a minority's uh, wrongdoings in order to justify hatred against them is a long-standing propaganda tactic. It goes back before mass media. So back on International Men's Day, the Instagram account at Feminist asked women what they would do if men disappeared for a day. And overwhelmingly, the response was something along the lines of uh, go out alone at night, or feel safe in the street. It was very much an emphasis on the perception of men as being dangerous and violent and so forth. Because we all know which group, even beyond someone like black people or other racial minorities, are perceived as being physically threatening. Uh, it's not transsexuals. Uh, was uh, constantly putting out 
articles on how this thing has been done by a Jew and this thing is done by a Jew. You know, Germany back in the 1930s was a big country. The United States today has 330 million people. If you wanted to fill a newspaper with stories of transgender people doing bad things, you could, but you'd have to fill a thousand more with the bad things cisgender people have done. Again, true, but even more true for men, and especially for, for poor and young black men, you know, the super predators, the, the super predator narrative, which, yeah, the transsexuals are now getting too, but they're not getting it on their own, because the same fear-mongering happens for any group of men, from schoolboys to, uh, to male teachers to just any group of men in general, and of course including the, the minorities such as transsexuals. You know, we have seen mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting being done by, obviously, cisgender people. I mean, how many times in all of the stories surrounding these 2,826 shootings have you even seen the term cisgender brought up from white people, from men? That's the actual group that disproportionately commits violence, by the way. Overwhelmingly so. It's men. And... And here's the irony, because he's complaining about demonization by focusing too much on violence by a specific group. And then he's going to focus entirely on violence by men. And of course there is a difference in that men actually are more likely to commit violence of this sort. However, the media representation of male violence is still massively overblown. The, uh, the violence that is committed by men is far more likely to get media attention and less favourable media attention. We've probably all seen uh, articles about women who rape children or have romantic relationships with children as the news media will report it. Whereas, of course, a man in the same situation will not be reported as having a romantic relationship with, say, a 12-year-old. So the issue of demonization and of disproportionate reporting is still there. And furthermore, there are, of course, reasons for that extra level of violence committed by men, mainly a mistreatment of those men during childhood. That is what we know causes violent crime, rather than gender or race. But regardless of those arguments, there's really no reason for Vouch to even bring men up here. He's just spitting the word. It's not the transsexuals who are dangerous, it's the men who do it. At every point, the right wing has been resistant. No, it is about mental illness. It's about lone wolf shooters. It's about this, that, the other. One school shooting by a transgender person. And it's the entire group who are violent, who are deranged. You know, I hope they release that manifesto at some point, because I'm actually curious in seeing what it says. The fact that it's been suppressed so far could, of course, mean that there are politically correct people trying to hide the culpability of the trans community, but also it might not mean that. But for as long as it's kept secret, there will be this adverse inference where people assume the worst. I have seen a, 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 a tide of right-wing hate today in the past 24 hours and a lot of it is directed against the idea of transgender people enthusiastically arming themselves for the purposes of our constitutionally protected right to self-defense you know i'm british we don't really do guns but this probably isn't optically the best time to be talking about how transsexuals should arm themselves for mass self-defense and i don't necessarily disagree i mean americans love guns i know that but it's just not the best look right now, you know? And if you're going to do it, and transsexuals in general are going to do it, then uh, there's no reason that you have to talk about it publicly when you know that there are people fear-mongering about armed transsexuals hunting people through the streets. What reactionary movements have historically done when it comes to depriving a minority group of their rights. If a single crime is committed by any one of them, you know, if a single Jewish person gets too feisty at a bar and starts a fight, does one murder... Oh, sure, you know, lock them up for murder, fine, but no, it's never enough. It always has to be directed against the group. This, they say, is why this entire group is a threat to us, to our way of living. I believe... Okay, this is something that we've all seen when it comes to men, especially in this country over the last couple of years. Ever since Sarah Everard, really, that's, that's when it really took off. Not to say that it wasn't also happening before. But there was one crime, an incredibly rare type of crime, committed by one man against one woman. And then, well, it became the grounds for all sorts of legislative change. The government are teaming up with radical feminist Dr Charlotte Proudman, an enemy of Johnny Depp during his legal troubles, 
to pass a law that makes it illegal for men to do various things, uh, approaching women in various ways, looking at women the wrong way, anything that could potentially cause her any sort of alarm or distress. Up in Scotland, the new First Minister is even talking about getting rid of jury trials in rape cases to help to improve conviction rates. And when I say improve, I mean increase. Consistently, it's been held that the one man who committed the crime was somehow representative of men in general. And the one woman who was the victim was was definitely very much representative, as far as the feminists are concerned, of women in general. And it would be nice if people like Vash could recognise that form of demonisation in the same way that they do when it affects transsexuals. Something which, again, I must keenly remind you, uh, have been predominantly the domain of white men for a long, long time. Yes, he must remind you. Must remind you. It's very vital that he remind you of that particular fact. Can't just be talking about how transsexuals aren't a danger to people. No, we've we've got to have someone to demonise in their place, I suppose. And who's an easier target than men for someone like Vouch? And still is. If you want to go by explicit ideologies, overwhelmingly, when we look at then jihadists, who are again, far right, it's basically the same ideology, except with Islam instead of Christianity, and then you have the incel ideology, Do you, though? Because I've never actually been able to find an example of an incel spree killer. Elliot Rogers is probably the first one to come to mind, right? Except no, because he wasn't in any way connected to any sort of incel community, nor did he identify as one. Then there's the Plymouth shooter. Well, he told the police that he was an incel, but then it turned out that he was trolling them. At least that's what he later said. That's what the police also said, that he was not an incel. He was some sort of insane American Trump supporter. I don't know why he was even in this country, I don't know why he decided to shoot people, but it definitely wasn't actually because he was an incel. And as far as I can tell, the cases all turn out to be like that. It's someone who was a racist and the the media decided he was an incel. uh, There's a lot of cases where people were apparently planning to do incel spree killings, but didn't actually kill anyone. Uh, One man in America was supposedly going to kill 3,000 women which would make him a bigger killer in America than Osama Bin Laden. Which makes me think that's obviously just fake. But that's the point, right? To be a fear monger. I found the tweet from Matt Walsh. I came to the conclusion years ago that the trans movement is the greatest evil our country faces. I only become more and more sure of this fact with each passing day and more and more determined to oppose it until my last breath. Did he say this when it was cisgender? And I include that because of what's on screen now. That's not a tweet from a somewhat major media figure talking about transsexuals. That's a major newspaper article by a radical feminist talking about men. But Vouch wouldn't recognise this as being problematic in the same way. But that doesn't change what it is.